ओम ज्ञान चिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानं जनशलाकाय चक्षुरनीलितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः वे ऑल रेगुलर्स हियर एनी न्यू कमर्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम पावेल आई थिंक पावेल इज अ न्यू कमर राइट फर्स्ट टाइम हियर ओके एनी अदर न्यू कमर्स आई सी वेल आ बिफोर टॉकिंग अबाउट बालराम आई वुड लाइक टू से समथिंग पर्सनल because when i came in here i was appreciating the very sweet kirtan very straight forward no frills unpretentious hari krishna kirtan sung very sweetly so as i had to go up again i asked yogindra prabhu my old friend from i mean everyone in sweden is from those yogindra prabhu who that was and he told me that beta chari from england So then I remembered uh how many years ago I know I have to do some arithmetic 33 years ago before I was initiated being on traveling sankirtan in England with Advaita Acharya Prabhu We were all trying to be very strict brahmacharis and he was cooking a big feast every day <laughs> breaking all the rules <laughs> and that uh singing that's that's the welsh right right there are a the whole group of devotees from wales joining they're all great singers because that's like the welsh tradition S- singing in the ch- singing in the chapel so singing for krishna so then i remember actually your wife from sweden right you married archana archana matajan archa archana archya she who is worshipable jai hari krishna so I'm very happy to see you after a long time and to hear your beautiful voice singing so nicely to krishna so tell me about singing well shall we sing you can, you can sing jai radhe jai krishna jai vrindavan do you all know this song yes i sing it because in this song comes jai ram ghata jai rohini nandan praise of lord balaram efficient <laughs> Swedish people are very together people <laughs> so we've heard <laughs> must be actually i mean it's only a small population but it's a, it's a well known country hari krishna yesterday was balaram purnima the appearance day of lord balaram so i'm fortunate to have two days to remember balaram because i was actually able to celebrate it yesterday also so if we can remember balaram all the time our life will be successful in all respects these special days are of course occasions to remember the glories and pastimes of the various personalities who are honored on these days the next big festival coming up is anyone know janmashtami shri krishna janmashtami the celebration of lord krishna's appearance in this world and after that shri vyasa puja shri prabhu yeah. So in Sri Krishna Janmashtami we generally speak on the famous verse from Bhagavad Gita Janma karma ch me divya me vangyo veti tatvatah chatva deham punar janma naiti ma meti sorja Mr. Krishna states that simply by knowing the divine nature of my appearance and activities one gains release from the cycle of birth and death one does not have to be born again in this material world but goes to krishna and stays with krishna so this is the benefit of krishna consciousness to understand krishna the supreme personality of godhead he is not a person of this material world he is a person that's the first important point he is not simply the supreme is not simply some impersonal 
force or energy or idea, but he is a person, but not well, yeah, a person like us, or we are like him in many ways, but without our defects, and supreme in all respects. So to understand Krishna is not very easy. To understand any person is not very easy. Therefore we have the what's called the science of psychology, but there are so many different branches of it, it doesn't seem to be like a science at all. There are different theories and schools of psychology. And for all these different schools of psychology, you could, you could bring all the psychologists in the world and have them study one single person, all of them, and they still wouldn't understand that person. It's very difficult to understand anyone. So what to speak of understanding Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the soul of all souls, uh, it becomes more difficult to understand him when we are so small and he is so great, and that we don't perceive him directly as just like I can perceive you. Your name is? Acharya. 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 Your name is Acharya. It's your family name, presumably. Acharya. Brahmin name. Hmm. So, I can see you, I can talk with you, but we don't see Krishna directly in that way. We understand that's due to our own impurity, that there is the Supreme Lord, and that our relationship with Him is the most important relationship. There's, no, there's nothing more important than our relationship with Krishna. And our relationships with others develop from that. But to understand Krishna in our present state is very difficult because Krishna is supremely pure. And we are contaminated by lust, greed, anger, envy, illusion, and so on, and so on, and so on. So to understand Krishna is not easy. But if we do understand Krishna, then we get freed from birth and death and we go to live with Krishna eternally. To understand Krishna is not easy. Manushanam sahasreshu kaschit yatati siddhya yatatam apisiddhanam kaschit maam veti tataha as Lord Krishna says. In Bhagavad Gita, out of thousands of people, one may even try for spiritual perfection. I mean, it's, it's not that many people are even interested in spiritual perfection. And many people are interested in making a show of it. There are many societies catering to people's spiritual whims, so-called spirituality, but people are actually serious about understanding the underlying reality, the spiritual truth. There are very few people, and even of those who have become accomplished in understanding some level of spiritual truth, very few can understand Krishna. Then, what am I saying all this for when we're supposed to be talking about Balaram? Well, to understand Balaram is even more difficult. Because to understand Krishna is difficult, but then we get to, you get, all right, there's, there's the Supreme Lord, and no one's above him, no one's equal to him, and then you find out that he's got an elder brother. And that becomes, you know, how does that fit into it? It doesn't fit into it. It doesn't really fit into any philosophical understanding. Just that Krishna expands himself into various forms for his own pleasure. Sometimes people ask, why is Krishna like that? Why is Krishna like this? Well, it's not really up to us to ask that, is it? I mean, just like, what do you like to eat for breakfast, Mr. Acharya? Porridge. Porridge. You're a Swedish Brahmin now. <laughs> nowadays. Well, why... Why porridge? You say, well, why not? It's a personal preference, isn't it? So, why does Krishna... Well, he has a big breakfast. I mean, he's a big eater, Krishna. If you, hear, if you read that song, what he takes for breakfast, I mean, it would knock any, knock any of us out. <laughs> Just like that Vajra Acharya's breakfast on Travelling Sangatan. 
the destroyer of traveling circuits, <laughs> knock out breakfasts. So Krishna's got a good digestion, he can eat a lot. I mean, he can eat the whole world. So, but why is he like that? Why does he like to play on a flute? Why not a saxophone? For instance? <laughs> well, why does anyone like to play any particular instrument? It's a personal taste. So Krishna, for his own pleasure, that is the, what is the logic? There's no worldly logic by which we can understand Balaram. It's that Krishna, out of his own desire, he expands himself into many forms, including you and me, and Mr. Acharya also, and Advaita Acharya. We are all expansions of Krishna. We all are meant for the pleasure of Krishna. And Balaram is known as Adi Guru, the original Guru, because he's the first expansion of Krishna. And what is Balaram famous for? For serving Krishna in all respects. The whole spiritual world is manifested by Balaram. Do you understand that? Any physicists here? Won't help to be a physicist to understand this because just like we have here Krishna inside the atom, there's a portrayal of Lord Vishnu inside the atom. But the physicist, this is metaphysics. You can't, you can't measure Krishna. You can't even measure an atom by mundane physics. What to speak of? What to speak of uh, transcendental physics? So we can't understand this, but we are informed of this from the Shastra, the scripture, which is knowledge of the spiritual world. That we have to accept on faith which is decried by those who subscribe to the empiric process, but actually everyone has faith in everything, everything we do at every moment. I mean, if you thought, if you came here, you're going to be machine gunned, you wouldn't have come here, right? You came here because you thought, well, we're going to have some nice kirtan and discussion of Balaram, and your faith has been fulfilled, we hope. You can't even drink a glass of water. You really can't, because there's no water. <laughs> but, uh, can I get some water? If you, I mean, it could be that someone put cyanide in it, but we have faith that there isn't cyanide in it, and it's drinkable. Because what the, uh, what they put in it might be worse than cyanide, but anyway, we have to drink something. So anyway, transcendental faith. That they're beyond this miserable, dark, cold, material world of which Sweden seems to have its own particular brand of darkness and coldness. There is a spiritual world. It's not, always, it's not that we have to live in an atmosphere which is miserable, full of birth and death and suffering and competition and exploitation. There is a spiritual world that is our the heart's hankering. When, when we are desiring in this material world, we're always desiring to be happy in so many ways. But this material world, it's like a desert. It's compared to a desert in which we, we want water, but there's no water. But the spiritual world is the place for which our soul hankers. And there there's not only water, but all the water is nectar. All the talking is singing. And always there is the sound of Krishna's flute. So that spiritual world is manifested by Lord Balaram out of his desire to please Krishna. Balaram is the personality of Godhead who serves the original personality of Godhead, Krishna. He's the original guru because he teaches by his activity how to serve Krishna the best. Guru means who teaches how to serve Krishna. 
and Balaram is the original guru because he does that first of all by his personal activities apart from expanding as the whole spiritual world the ground, the sky, the trees all living beings are all manifestations of Balaram but he also becomes personally Krishna's shoes Krishna's umbrella Krishna's bed he, the, you've seen the picture of Krishna lying on a bed and in his Narayan form he lies on the Ananta Shayan the, the form of a, a massive snake very cool for Krishna to lie in and shades Krishna with his hoods he becomes the Brahmin thread of Krishna and he serves as Balaram although he's the elder brother of Krishna he serves Krishna in, as, the, uh, as the expansion of the spiritual world as, as the shoes as the Brahmin thread and the bed and the parasol and in so many ways he expands himself this is serving Krishna in Shantarati in, just in a neutral way and he interacts personally with Krishna in Dasyarati personally serves Krishna even though he's the elder brother and in the western countries there's no idea of how a younger brother serves an older brother or not much idea of how anyone serves anyone else because of the idea of democracy everyone is equal and don't offer respect to anyone because it's below our dignity to do so and everyone should, we, we have to treat equally in all respects but uh, in Vedic culture, or this culture of the spiritual world, there are demarcations. The elder brother is respected as much as the father. It's again difficult to understand in a culture where there's no respect for fathers and maybe not even fathers around anyway at all. So uh, Balaram as the elder brother of Krishna is to be respected by Krishna. And we may say, well, how if Krishna is the Supreme Lord, is he respecting others? Well, because he's the Supreme Lord. That sounds like strange logic, but because he's the Supreme Lord, he also enjoys or showing others how to respect their seniors. So Balaram is respected by Krishna but he also serves Krishna when Krishna apparently becomes tired from running in the forest then Balaram will massage his legs and sometimes Krishna massages Balaram's legs and they play together as friends so they, sometimes Balaram is offering respect to Krishna and serving him this is Dasyarati and then they're playing as friends this is Sakyarati and Balaram is respected by Krishna and he sometimes rebukes Krishna and corrects Krishna tells him you have done wrong you should not do this when Krishna kidnapped Rukmini then Rukmini's eldest brother Rukmi came chasing after Krishna and Krishna captured Rukmi and wanted to kill him but instead because he thought, well, Rukmini will be very upset. Even though Rukmi came to kill me, he, Krishna just tied him up and gave him what today would be called a punk haircut. He chopped a little bit off here and a little bit there, left all little bits here and there. And today would be considered very stylish. <laughs> but that was actually an insult. So Balaram came and rebuked Krishna. That actually, you see... He may have acted like an enemy, this Rukmi, but after all, he's your brother-in-law now, so you shouldn't be so harsh with him and like this. And he, he pacified Rukmini and in this way took the role of the family advisor to Krishna and Rukmini. So he acted like that in the Vatsalya Rati, the, in the like parental role. And uh, not so well known, but revealed by our Vaishnava Acharyas, is that Balaram, who 
we don't find the description of Balaram mixing up with Krishna's gopis. He has his own gopis. Because it's a very private thing, Krishna's pastimes with his gopis. It's, it's very difficult to understand Krishna. And even more difficult to understand Krishna and the gopis. Because the cowherd girls, because it sounds to us like some kind of uh, ordinary boy-girl affairs. Although that actually that's Ananda Chinmaya Rasa. Spiritual, transcendental, loving exchange. But it's difficult to understand, no doubt. It's the very highest level of spiritual understanding. So we don't discuss that publicly very much. So Balaram, as a brother, he doesn't mix up in, the, in those affairs of Krishna. But he also serves Krishna because he, his desire to serve Krishna is so strong that he doesn't want to miss any opportunity to serve Krishna. And he wants to serve Krishna in all circumstances. So he also uh, expands himself or by what's called avesh or by transcendentally entering the personage of Ananga Manjari who is the uh, younger sister of Srimati Radharani he also serves Krishna in Madhurya Rati so Balaram in all ways is serving Krishna Srila Prabhupada often spoke of Balaram this name Balaram Bala means strength and Ram means pleasure. So Srila Prabhupada explained Balaram to mean he who takes pleasure in strength. Just like you'll see even today. It's, if a man has a big strong body, Olympic Games, they like to pick up weights and throw hammers. And, oh, I, I was just thinking of this. This uh, Balaram's the original. They have the, in the Olympic Games, the hammer throwing, they go round and round and so the Dena Kasura, they were killing the donkeys by picking up their hind legs, whirling them round and round. And <laughs> so, gold medal to Balaram. <laughs> and actually, those men who are picking up the big weights. Oh, sorry, I've got a pain in my ribs there. <laughs> Not me, I wouldn't be <laughs> No hope for me at the Olympic Games. <laughs> so they could pick me up and, with their little finger, those weightlifters. So uh, where does this strength come from? That comes from Balaram. Balang Balavatam Chaham. The strength of the strong comes from Krishna. And particularly Balaram, he represents or in in body is difficult to say the, the words the, they don't really uh, give justice to Balaram but Balaram he shows the strength of Krishna and the beauty of Krishna Balaram is very beautiful so Srila Prabhupada often spoke of how we ha in spiritual life we have to take strength from Balaram Nayam Atma Balanena Hina no one can become spiritually advanced without strength. Now, there's one Swami, famous in India, who had very little sense of Vivek, but was famous for Vivek, which means discrimination. But his idea was that you have to have a strong body, then you can become spiritually advanced. So he recommended better to play football than read Bhagavad Gita. In other words, he was a complete fool. But uh, he made some wrong propaganda like this. It's not by having bodily strength that one can understand anything about God. Otherwise, the buffalo would be spiritually advanced. You don't have buffaloes in this country, except in the zoo probably. Or the weightlifters would be spiritually advanced, but they're not spiritually advanced. They're, they're bodily strong for a very short time. Their bodily strength doesn't last very long. In their next life they may become a flea or an ant. Who, the ant, you see, they're so 
course, an ant is quite strong by his own relative size, but you just tread on them on the street and you don't even notice. They're so insignificant. If you want to call someone insignificant, you say, you're just an ant. So the weightlifter of today might be the ant of tomorrow. <laughs> but spiritual strength, that is imparted by Balaram. So remembering Balaram, it's not just remembering some stories of his pastimes and saying that was nice and drinking some Varuni juice, which is very popular on Balaram's appearance day. You have plenty of Varuni juice. We usually make that for Balaram's appearance day. That. That's described in Krishna book how Balaram was drinking Varuni, which means honey, more or less. So that's a famous Iskon tradition to have honey drink on Balaram's appearance day. And they're getting intoxicated and go on hurry now. <laughs> so that's one of Balaram's wives also. Varuni is one wife. And the other one is who can say? Revati. Revati. So, Balaram is the giver of spiritual strength and as the Adi Guru, the first teacher about Krishna, he's serving Krishna and he's telling everyone the duty of Guru is to instruct others for their benefit. So, he's saying, serve him, serve him, serve him. You see, I'm serving him, you serve him. So, Balaram, this strength of Balaram is transmitted through the Parampara system and therefore the Vaishnava Guru is understood to be the uh, manifestation of the strength of Balara. That one gets strength from following the instruction of the Guru who is taking strength through the Parampara system from Balara. That strength is the spiritual strength to overcome material desires and material attachments. No one can become spiritually advanced if they are maintaining material desires and material attachments. Even if we chant Hare Krishna, which is the method for becoming spiritually advanced. But if we maintain material desires and material attachments, then the example is given. It's Well, a good example is like that. The, the mouse in the treadmill, he's running, but doesn't go anywhere. Or another example is that of rowing the boat very hard but it's tied up to the shore. So for all the rowing, 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 and not going anywhere, because we're tied to the shore by the rope of our desire to not go anywhere, to remain where we are. So, taking strength from Balaram means to follow the rules and regulations of spiritual life as instructed in the Parampara system uh, as transmitted by the Gurus in Parampara and to pray to Balara who in this Kali Yoga has come as Lord Nityananda Ra you are hearing in the Kirta Nityananda Ra Nityananda Balaram gives spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. Narottam Das sings that Nitai More Korosuki Narottama Boroduki Nitai More Korosuki that I'm very unhappy being attached to this material world but Nityananda can make me happy by giving me spiritual strength. Ar Kobe Nitai Chande Karuna Hoibe Shongshara Bhashana Mo Kobe Tucha Hobe the Rotam Das prays that 
When will, when I give up attachment to material sense gratification, Vishoycharya kabe shuddha habe man tabe hama herabo shri vrindava. Then I'll be able to see the spiritual world. That is possible by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So, remembering the many pastimes of Balaram, there are so many pastimes. He was from the very beginning in Vrindavan. Krishna, Balaram is accompanying Krishna, taking him out to the cowherd pastures. Yashoda Mai, she only agreed to let Krishna go out to the pasturing grounds only if Balaram goes. Because so many demons are coming to attack Krishna every day. So Balaram should be there. He's very strong. He can protect Krishna from all the demons. Yashoda Mai had great faith in Balaram. So Balaram was always with Krishna in all his Vrindavan pastimes. He accompanied him to Mathura. There's they were Together they fought in the wrestling arena. Ah. And Krishna killed Chanura and Balaram killed Mushtika and like this. One, a, one after another. Pairs of wrestlers were uh, dealt with by Krishna and Balaram. Then uh, when Krishna, he took all the residents of Vrindavan to, of Mathura, to Dwaraka, then uh, Balaram also followed, and Balaram was with Krishna throughout all his pastimes. So Balaram shows how to serve Krishna. Ahaituki apratihata, without any personal desire, and always, non stop, all the time. So we can remember the pastimes of Balaram, they're all connected with Krishna how Balaram is simply interested in serving Krishna. And in this way, I pray to Balaram, Nityananda, for strength to overcome the material desires that uh, block our advancement towards pure Krishna consciousness. Balaram manifests the whole spiritual world so we can pray to him for entrance into the spiritual world and for the opportunity to assist him, although he doesn't need any assistance, but he's so kind, he gives us the opportunity to assist him in his service to Krishna. So it's a nice day or night to remember the pastimes of Balaram. There's so many pastimes. I'm just trying to say, eventually he killed Rukmi. <laughs> and uh, Divira Gorilla, he also finished him off. He was the uh, teacher of Duryodhana, Duryodhana Guru. He was interestingly, although he is the, of course, he's serving Krishna always, but he was also partial to the Kauravas, to Duryodhana. He was teaching Duryodhana how to fight with a club. So. He was a guru that, in that way also. So He also had some affection for Duryodhana. That's his kindness. Then Balaram purified the whole land that is nowadays known as India by traveling all over. We can go to all, all the famous holy places of India and they're all touched by Balaram's lotus feet with the exception of Puri. He's, he's there as Balaram with Jagannath, but he didn't go to Puri. But he visited all the holy places. So when we go there, we can remember Balaram and pray, pray for his blessings. In this way, Balaram has very kindly purified the whole land of Bharat. And Srila Prabhupada, who is carrying the strength of Balaram and who was worshipping Balaram from his very childhood. He brought out the Jagannath Rathayatra in his very childhood, which means with Balaram also. So he was worshipping Balaram from his childhood. So Srila Prabhupada brought Balaram to the whole world. Who would have known anything about Balaram 
if it wasn't for Srila Prabhupada. So we again and again thank Srila Prabhupada for having given us this opportunity to come here together, remember Lord Balaram, and pray for his strength. Just like there's this t shirt here, I'm the servant of Srila Prabhupada's mission. Yeah, so it's a great. To actually be a servant in Srila Prabhupada's mission, it's not such a small thing. It's without any uh, disrespect to yourself, it's not just a matter of wearing a t shirt. There's a lot more to it than that. One actually has to be a surrendered servant, as Balaram teaches us. So you can pray to Balaram for the strength to properly represent Srila Prabhupada's mission. In this world, it is a great opportunity. There are very few people in this world who understand the importance of Krishna consciousness, of worshipping Krishna and Balaram. Srila Prabhupada has brought this mission to the most unlikely and unexpected places. So we pray to Balaram for the strength to give people the knowledge by which they can actually become happy. The knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, the knowledge of chanting Hare Krishna. People suffering in this material world can get actual enlightenment from the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. To distribute that in the modern age is not an easy thing, as you all know. By the grace of Srila Prabhupada and Lord Balaram, the more it's distributed, the better it gets. The preaching opportunities get better. But to properly represent Srila Prabhupada and Lord Balaram, we actually have to have spiritual strength. It's not good to represent oneself as a member of Srila Prabhupada's mission if we don't follow the basic practices given us by Srila Prabhupada. And people will wonder what we're doing. If we they say, well you're a member of the Hare Krishna movement, yes, and they say, well why why are you doing this? You know, why are you doing that? Why are you doing? If they read the books, then they'll see what we're supposed to be doing. Unfortunately, sometimes people ask us, "Should we do what's in your books or do what you're doing?" So, it's not such a small thing to be a member of Srila Prabhupada's mission. It's a very great challenge for all of us to maintain that level of purity in an age where meat-eating, gambling, all uh, previously unimaginable forms of illicit sex and intoxication are considered not only normal but laudable and one who doesn't engage in them is considered strange. So it's, very, it's a very difficult age to follow these principles of purity. We can only do so if we take strength from Balaram and Krishna by following the uh, committing ourselves to follow the principles of purity in this way we can become actual representatives of Srila Prabhupada's mission by the mercy of Lord Balaram Balaram Ki Jai Hare Krishna so Smita Krishna Maharaj will say some more there's plenty more to say. There's always more to say. Of course, the capacity for hearing or listening is not may not be so great, but if there's a change of speaker, it might wake everyone up. Yeah, let's hear some more. Balaram Katar. coming here and speaking and lightning us much. Thank you very much for being here in Sweden. <laughs> resident sannyasi. Not many countries of this size have a resident sannyasi. So I came here to, to increase my sannyas association account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's not that many of us in the world. <laughs> in any case, that's Balaram's mercy also that, yes, 
as stated, the giver of strength, spiritual strength, the strength, one has the strength to control the senses and mind, the focus of the Lord, to see to the Lord, to serve the Lord. But also then the, uh, the, the strength also comes from a desire. Mm-hmm. So if the desire is there, then you know, then it can push through. But if there's no desire, then how, uh, you know, okay. <laughs> we may have strength, but without desire we will not really get anywhere. So therefore the desire also, uh, Balaram or from Krishna, in the form of Balaram, getting, getting the desire for spiritual life. And we say the desire comes from association. So that was like a, a beginning question with something, how to get serious. And they said, yes, just say we don't swore serious. <laughs> and then I concluded, okay, I have to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the point is, with good association, in the, in the association, the desire is cultivated with spirit to life. And that way we, we carry on. Because, so that I see as... Uh, Balaram's, Balaram's mercy that uh, the strength to control the senses and also the desire to progress in spiritual life and therefore we need to control our senses and our mind getting, uh, purifying itself. The uh, <coughs> one thing with Krishna and Balaram, what, what Balaram Balaram is the elder brother and Krishna is the younger brother so according to the tradition the Vedic tradition the younger brother so it's the older brother, <laughs> or based the older brother. At the same time, some place I remember, because you mentioned um, whatever, um, Shanti Ras, Dasya Ras, Sakya Ras, some place Prabhupada also, uh, I have a vague memory of reading that he mentioned that Father on one sense has a fraternal relationship. As an older brother, it's a little bit like protective, if you say like that. As a parent, is protected with the child. Also, the older brother. Hey, what's happened to my younger brother? Mm. But in that way, being in the old position of the older brother, actually serves the younger brother. <laughs> so in that way, uh, Balaram serves Krishna, um, even though he's the older brother. <laughs> well, because he's the younger brother, who he protects. As we heard about the demons, then mentioned here, the mother Yasoda thinking, well, how can I send out Krishna in the forest? There's so many demons, and then. Mm-hmm. Well, when Balaram is there protecting him, protecting him, then she feels safe. Okay, Krishna will be protecting mm-hmm. him. Then, then of course, there's another dimension because Krishna comes first. And we, well, well, someone other spiritually first as Krishna. Then there is Krishna expands as Balaram, and then in the form of Balaram supports all of the pastimes. So now the <clears throat> so that way Krishna is the oldest. <laughs> Mm. He's the first, right, and, then, right. and then comes Balaram. So, from a spiritual point of view, it's a natural position. I, su- I support uh, Krishna, who is the original, original personality of Godhead. They're both the personality of Godhead, but Krishna is the first there, and then he expands as Balaram. So, that way, so that way I see that, yes, so that is like the, yeah. being the older and still serving, but it's also that the point is that Krishna is actually the original personality of Godhead, so mm-hmm. that's who serves, uh, serves him. And that also in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's mentioned there that how, <coughs> how all the different avatars or devotees or whatever, everyone is serving Krishna, including Balaram, let's <laughs> mm-hmm. say. So they all, they all, in a serving, even even the personalities of Godhead, of the various forms, are in the mood of serving Lord Krishna in his pastimes. So in that way, you know, Krishna is original, and, and Balaram supports that supreme original personality. Of course, then I should send this. What I find interesting is this: a point that the where well, that's Krishna and that's Balaram, they're both the Supreme Personality of God, and they're still their pers- persons, and they're not, mm-hmm. they're not all one. They are, they are ex- not exactly all different. We are, as you said, we also, we also expansions of the Supreme Personality of God, and the, the tiny expansions. At the same time, we are the, we are the ones that can fall down into the material oceans of saying it, more or less, almost drowning, covered over completely. But then that what I find fascinating. Well, that that is just like when Krishna Balaram, then then Balaram having like this affinity for Duryodhana in, the, in this uh, when they came to the battle of Kurukshetra, and then like Balaram 
Now I he stepped back in order to say honor the Krishna Krishna decision or the Krishna support of the Pandavas. And otherwise, he had this, this, some some affection for Duryodhan or uh, like that uh, because of being person his personal relationship. So that it's also this in the spirit of life. How is it? On one hand. <coughs> Now here is two swamis, it's all the same, but at the same time we have different personalities. Or well, like devotees, or, I mean, it's all devotees, but there, there's individuality and personal uh, yeah. things. At the same time, the goal is the same, it's to serve Krishna. And the Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore there is the, the underlying unity in purpose of serving, and, and serving Krishna, serving Sila Prabhupada, serving Bhagavan. And that way, someone will be meet together here to worship and celebrate Lord Balaram. Jai. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know, we're going to see some, there's going to be a small theater. Right. Okay, one thing about Balaram, what I, what I, what I, what of course, being a, well, I'm a resident Sanyas of Sweden, right? more. I have my specific uh, base at Dunning School or farm project, or farm community, community, there's a community on the farm, on the farm, and of course, in that position, I see, well, Krishna is playing on the flute, and Prince Balram is play, carrying the plow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, sometimes, sometimes Balram also carries a club, but, but the club and plow is very much his uh, weapons, whereas uh, Krishna, uh, then Krishna has a chakra and he has his flute. But then uh, some place prophets uh, indicated that, uh, well, Krishna's playing the flute, he's a cowherd taking care of the cows, and then uh, the plow, in one sense, indicating also the, the importance of uh, caring for the earth, for cultivating the earth uh, in, in a nice way. <laughs> and in one sense, we can, by, by caring for the earth, the Balaram cared for the earth to protect, well, at least carries the plow. Then, by caring the care, caring for the earth, for the mother earth, they will also she will reciprocate with them, uh, whether good yoga, <laughs> good quality food to offer to Krishna and wish to be taken, and then uh, in that way we'll get nourishment, so that our mind can be peaceful, our senses be spiritually strong, <laughs> and not agitated by junk food that we have in the modern time that uh, maybe it seems, seems like food, but actually it doesn't give any real strength. And actually there's more agitation of the senses of the, of the physical and the mental system by which we become even more disturbed mm-hmm. and more difficult to progress in the spiritual life. So that's what I think of. When I think of Balram, he's kind of carrying the flow and whatever. And by that, well... There was actually... Um it was in 1977, Prabhupada was talking a lot about these farm communities. Yeah. And Jamal Krishna said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, you're the farm acharya. <laughs> Prabhupada said, no, Krishna and Balaram, they're the farm acharyas. <laughs> Krishi Raksha, he said these two. Th- that uh, Krishna, he said, Krishna carries the flute, that's for calling the cows, and he also secretly calls the gopis. <laughs> and the plow, so that's the cow protection. And the Krishi agriculture, there's Balaram with the plow. So he said, actually, Krishna and Balaram are the plow. Oh, so it's not my idea. It's Krishna and Balaram. It's their idea. Thank you. <laughs> Another nice Prabhupada story. Okay, okay. let's do Balaram. Yes, please go. <laughs> I just came to mind. Yes. This is uh, Allahabad, Kumbh Mela, Arda Kumbh Mela, 1970. Tamal Krishna again. He was not sannyasi at that time. His photos here. So uh, he came to Prabhupada and said that, well, we have a controversy among our devotees because uh, Revati Nanda, he says that Balaram is non different from Krishna. It's written in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya that Balaram is exactly like Krishna. The only difference is that. Krishna is blue and Balaram is white. And Prabhupada said, he's right. <laughs> and Tamal Krishna said that, but Yamuna says that Balaram is different from Krishna because he has his own set of gopis and his own personality. 
And Prabhupada said, she's right. <laughs> so then tomorrow Krishna asked Prabhupada, then the, well, which one's actually correct? What's the answer? Oh. Prabhupada said, you decide. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I wouldn't give such a simple answer. <laughs> so we're left asking. So, what should we do to get the answer? Well, Pray. I suggest we chant Hare Krishna and go to the spiritual world and ask Balaram. <laughs> see what he says. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Go to the spiritual world and see what Balaram says. <laughs> and let Balaram, Balaram give us the strength and the intelligence, maybe also the intelligence, how to understand and how to relate to whatever. The point is that it's inconceivable. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not, you know, you can't get a mathematical formula. <laughs> Balaram equals 2x squared minus yz cubed. There's no such formula. He's inconceivable. Okay, and then we can say that to, to try to understand the inconceivable with our tiny brain is impossible. <laughs> but of course, the Lord can be understood uh, to the degree of that. Uh, um, that's like uh, to understand Krishna fully. Well, maybe we can understand him fully to our capacity, but to understand fu- fully Krishna in, in his own fullness is, let's say, Impossible. We don't have the capacity. At the same time, through devotion and through surrender, we can understand the Supreme Lord as He reveals Himself to us. And that we can say, He reveals Himself to us via the Guru, the Guru Parampara. And that way we can know something about Krishna by the mercy of Guru. And then we have Balaram as Adi Guru, as original Guru. And this way the mercy comes down. The power to understand Krishna comes down through the Guru Parampara. And that way, by, and then again, following the Guru Parampara, I said, many following the instructions. On one, one hand, not just by word, but also by action. And then getting the strength and the purity and whatever. <laughs> and when Krishna is pleased, pleased and Balaram is pleased, then he can reveal. He can be revealed to us, let's say. And then maybe I thought, he said, well, you know, okay, let's pray to Balaram, okay, one day, <laughs> whatever. You please reveal this to us. And then by the, by, by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, then we can understand and make progress in the spiritual life. And it may so not be a mystery, but that's a mystery. <laughs> the mystery is that it's understood by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, let's say. It can't be understood by the mental speculation or academic... Uh, <coughs> qualification, but it's a devotional qualification. And that is stated before here. And that's Balaram shows, yes, to surrender or surrender and so Krishna in, in all kinds of ways. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, what's the drama? Uh, it will take us some time to. Uh, you ready to start the performance? Is there, is there, is there, is there, do you going to put up something? We're going to put up the whole spiritual world. <laughs> <laughs> it's a job of Balaram. Yeah. Uh, we have to put up some. <coughs> so the devotees are sitting just next to the wall here. We'll this finally move over. The, the audience. Oh, so I'm going to announce here. my books if okay. you know yeah. that would be good. Yeah. good time. So this area here is the stage here. So okay. No. Everyone's sitting here. If anyone's interested in this little interval, you could come and have a look at some of these books which I have here. I've written some books on Shiva Prabhupada's order. And I'm trying to distribute them because I might as well distribute them. So I uh, and some CDs of lectures are available. Books are there, A Beginner's Guide to Krishna Consciousness. All the basic practices are outlined there. Brahmachari and Krishna Consciousness, for those who want to practice very seriously. 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, an overview of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Glimpses of traditional Indian life, the traditional Vedic culture is outlined there. Then uh, on pilgrimage in holy India, photo essays, visits to holy places. Then uh, Jai Srila Prabhupada, praise of Srila Prabhupada, my memories of Srila Prabhupada, self-explanatory. And some other books. Bhamsi Das Babaji, description of Bhamsi Das Babaji, and a few others. Is there any questions? Questions, yes. All right. Uh, yeah. You were talking about spiritual strength. I was talking about spiritual strength, yes. Bodily strength. Bodily strength, yes. Yeah. So, if I understand right, the bhakti yoga, the bhakti yoga process, that is for spiritual strength. Bhakti yoga is for spiritual strength, yeah. yeah. And uh, this uh, popular hatha yoga, that is for... Hatha yoga is for bodily strength. Uh, not really. Hatha yoga is for preparing the mind for meditation. It's not... It's... It gives fitness, but that's not the actual goal of it. The goal is to help make the mind steady for meditation. The fitness part is only a preparation. The people in the modern age take it to be all in all. Ah, so it's more the part of the mind than... The all of yoga is meant for yoga indriya samyamya, for controlling the mind. That's the basic principle of all the yoga practices. So this hatha yoga refers to the two basic kinds of breaths, ingoing and outgoing. So when these are balanced, then the mind becomes steady. That's all. All this, all fantastic asanas and putting your legs up behind your neck. It's all just simply meant for making the breath calm, so the mind can be steady. There's another way to make the mind steady by fixing it on Krishna, which is easier more natural and uh, much more directly spiritual process. Uh, can one say that it is so much in our process that it, that, uh, it can be replaced, uh, that Bhagavad Gita can be replaced by Hatha Yoga? Bhagavad Gita can be replaced by Hatha Yoga. You can say that if you like, but it's not exactly correct. No, it's not correct. No, not correct. No. Bhagavad Gita is the summation of all spiritual knowledge in which that kind of yoga is rejected by Arjuna who is listening. And Krishna told Arjuna that the best kind of yoga is to meditate on Krishna. Yes. So there's no actual need for that at all. No. It's for people who are, who are not ready to accept the, the actual highest process which is directly to link with Krishna which is called Bhakti Yoga. It's actually for people of not a very high level of consciousness, yeah. bodily consciousness. Can be, the exercises can be adopted for physical health, but it's spiritually, uh, it's not very helpful. So the recommendation for uh, programs in the temple room like this, is that... Oh, we came program? to this. Should we have Hatha Yoga in the temple room? No. Someone else might say yes. I vote no. Give me more votes. Uh, yeah, I have a question. As a newcomer, I don't have the knowledge of insight. Right, the, the lecture today was a bit on a high level, not so much for newcomers. So I, I have a kind of a because it's a special festival. Yeah. I have a kind of a general question. Yeah. What you, uh, is there a, what, what is the, the cause of the material desires according to the uh, yeah. uh, for instance if you uh, something similar to Christianity in the original sin yeah uh, so is there a kind of a clue what, why, why do we have material desires well desire is the natural function of the soul the nature of the soul is to be conscious consciousness defines the soul where there is Consciousness, there is the soul. And consciousness means desires. It is uh, inseparably 
linked with consciousness. So the soul always has desire. Spiritual desire means the pure desire to selflessly serve Krishna. And material desire comes about when we forget Krishna. And then we desire to satisfy our own senses by eating, sleeping, touching, tasting, smelling, feeling, and so on. So material desire comes from each each individual soul has material desire because of each individual spirit soul's having chosen at some point way back many lifetimes ago to attempt to enjoy separately from Krishna. So it's an, in, it's an individual original sin. It's actually this idea, it's, uh, it's very core theology that Adam ate an apple and as a result of that the whole human race is suffering since time immemorial. It's very weak theology, sorry to say. It's our own individual choice. And we can rectify that by our own individual choice to serve Krishna. It's an, it's an individual enterprise. Yeah. What if we get sense gratification from, for instance, prasadam? Or doing if we get sense gratification from prasadam, yeah, it's not... Or doing some service or, or whatever. Yeah. If there's any material desire, then we're still not fully pure. But how do we know? I mean... Um, how do we know? Then we can see. Look at ourselves. Am I doing this for Krishna or am I doing it for myself? Of course, material desires can be very subtle. And sometimes even what starts off as, it seems to be a pure desire, that can become infected by material desire. Just like, for instance, someone may want to sing very nicely for Krishna's pleasure. Then they notice that other people are appreciating that. And then they take pleasure from other people appreciating them. And that, that desire to be appreciated by others and praised by others mixes with the desire to please Krishna. So it can be very subtle. So should we uh, refrain them from, from this? Should we refrain from trying to serve Krishna nicely? No. <laughs> that doesn't mean we should stop trying to stop serve Krishna. But we should pray to Krishna... And please give me the purity by which I can serve you without any personal desire. It takes practice. That's the meaning of sadhana. To practice. To gradually become purified. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. How can we get rid of the desire for name, fame, and glory? It's sad to say it's not that easy. It's easier to give up gross sense gratification. It's also not easy, but, it's, but the subtle desire to be praised by others is very deep in the heart. But, like all other desires, it can be overcome by the process of the process of bhakti yoga. By following this, and uh, praying to Guru and Krishna. What is that? Nijamane uh, Sprihari. We pray. Guru Dev, Kripa Dindu Dev. May he be like you without any personal desires. If we are sincerely endeavoring in Krishna consciousness and we develop such desires, then Krishna... We can pray that Krishna remove these desires. Sometimes it's very painful. It may be very embarrassing. But Krishna acts to purify his servants. So we should have faith that if we stick to this process, that Krishna will help us. And actually it's not that... I mean, if we consider... Just like sometimes people say, how can I... How can I be free of pride? How can I be humble? And my reply is, well, what have you got to be proud about? What are you proud about? And then if you think about it, well, I'm proud because, uh, you know, I, I eat less chapatis than other people. Or I eat more chapatis than other people. If you eat more, you think I'm better because I eat more. If you eat less, you think I'm better because I eat less. If you play the Radhanga well, you become proud that I play it well. If you don't play it well, you see, you see, 
I'm, I'm not trying to put on a show. Whatever you do, you try to convert it into some kind of personal prestige issue. So, uh, if we see that in our heart, then we, we simply have to fix our desire on acting in a way that is pleasing to Krishna. May we do everything for Krishna's pleasure, not for any personal pleasure. Just have to pray for them. Endeavor for them. Yeah. So, what if uh, spiritual sense gratification enters in your mind? Spiritual sense gratification? What do you mean by that? I mean, if everything you should be spiritual activities, but you are getting sense gratification out of it. Yeah, well, it's not really spiritual then, is it? It's not, it's not just the activity that makes something spiritual, but it's the, the motivation that goes with it. One can chant the holy names and visit holy places, but if the motive is for personal gratification, it's not truly spiritual. So then we, we hear again and again daily, Nityam Bhagavata Seva, everything should be done for the sake of Krishna. We have to remember that if we have that motive to do everything for the pleasure of Krishna, and then we go off course, then by hearing again and again, we remember, oh yes, we should do it for Krishna's pleasure. Krishnarte Akela Cheshta. Everything should be done for the sake of Krishna. Remember, oh yeah, that's right, okay. So that, all right, let me do it for the sake of Krishna. And then again we're going off course. And again we hear. In various ways we hear the same thing. Ahaituki apati hata. Everything should be done without personal motive. Only for Krishna's pleasure. All the time. Remember, yes. That's right. So hearing constantly. Hearing regularly. That will help to keep us on track. Attentiveness. Just like in driving. And if you, you have to adjust the steer, so adjust, adjust. Otherwise, we go off track. Yeah, there's some other question. Yeah, yeah please. I was uh, thinking about this main Balaram, and uh, you mentioned that, uh, or it was mentioned today that Bala means strength and great pleasure as Rama. So he takes great pleasure in this train. Can we invite him in our heart to display? To like display his strength. Yeah, to kill the demons. That oh, certainly, yes. That's another important thing. And that's why I said there's so many, so many things to, to say. That, uh, yeah, the demons, various demons of material desires, we can pray to Balaram to please help us to overcome these demons of material desires within the heart. Yeah, please. Uh, it, just, it just came in my mind when you said uh, Balaram even taught uh, Duryodhana. What message we got from this? Uh, what sorry? What message? What message? Yeah, we got from this like uh, he, he was a demon. Why? In other words, you're asking why? Yeah. Uh, well, one thing is that Yenitam uh, Prabhadam Tei Thomas Tathayda Bajamiyaham. Duryodhana came to learn from Balaram, and Balaram shared that knowledge of club fighting with him. Through the Vedic knowledge and the Vedic culture, Krishna shares all kinds of knowledge with all kinds of people. And we can learn, and in this case he gave the knowledge of club fighting directly to Duryodhana. But just like people who learn about various Vedic sciences, but they don't get the essence which is to service to Krishna. So Duryodhana, he came to Balaram directly, but he only approached him for a material subject. So he didn't get the real mercy of Balaram, which is love of Krishna. So we can learn how Krishna is very merciful even to non-devotees. And he may have some affection for them. Just like so many people visit temples in India, not so much here, but they'll visit temples and ask for some material benefit. And Krishna also has some affection, they're coming to him. But his full affection goes to those who approach him for love of Krishna. So many people, you see, Tirupati, so many people going, asking, give me money, give me a visa for Sweden or America, more likely. 
you may reciprocate, but they don't get love of Krishna unless they come in contact with someone who teaches them that and they, they take it up. So Krishna, he is so kind that he will interact with everyone at, at any level they, they come to him. But his real mercy is for those who want to serve. If Duryodhana had approached Balaram and said, please teach me how to serve Krishna, how happy Balaram would be. Yeah. We can't, yeah, if we, we can't be advanced if we have material desires. Generally, it's understood that chanting Hare Krishna helps us to be free of material desires. But we have to cultivate the spirit of being free from material desires. If we chant Hare Krishna and at the same time we're nourishing our material desires, we're not trying to become spiritually advanced, then we won't become spiritually advanced. That's why we have to hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam from devotees and be guided by them. Otherwise we can chant Hare Krishna for many lifetimes and not advance in Krishna consciousness. There will be benefit, but not the same benefit that we get from linking with the parampara that teaches us to surrender to Krishna. That's why we find many mayavadis, persons who are not devotees of Krishna, they also chant Hare Krishna. But they don't make actual, they don't make tangible spiritual progress. So hearing has to be with chanting. They have to go together. So this chanting helps to remove the material desires? Chanting helps to remove the material desires. Well, material desires go away by Krishna's mercy. So if we're chanting, praying to Krishna, that please give me the opportunity please purify me so that I may serve you, that chanting, by such chanting, the heart will become purified. If we chant even without that desire, still benefit is there. But the real benefit goes to those who chant with the intention of becoming purified for serving Krishna. So, any more questions? Are we ready for the drama? Yeah, lots of questions. That's nice. And we're not ready for the drama. Okay. <laughs> you have mentioned about that it's not cheap to be a servant. Shall I work hard mission? Yeah. Uh, so what do you consider to be like most important to really call oneself a servant? To call oneself a servant of Srila Prabhupada's mission? Well, one should at least follow the basic principles that Srila Prabhupada gave us. It's not very difficult to understand, is it? If we don't follow the basic principles and we, we still want to identify ourselves with Srila Prabhupada's mission, it's hypocritical, isn't it? So at least the basic things should be followed. Four regulated principles. Minimum 16 rounds a day chanting. Regularly associating with devotees. Studying Prabhupada's books. These are the basic things. And the mission means also acting to spread that. Mm. No, he didn't exactly say that. That's a misquote. Or it's not a complete quote. Your love will be shown your love will be shown by how much you cooperate. The actual uh, quote is your love for me will be shown by how you cooperate to keep this institution together. That's a, that's a more precise quote. It's not just some kind of love everyone and everything's wonderful and cooperate, you do whatever you like and but it's specifically to, to keep this institution together after my passing. Otherwise cooperate is a vague term that Srila Prabhupada gave it in a specific context. Otherwise, people, you know, they say cooperation, love, compassion, peace, mercy, and they're all vague. But specifically, your love for me will be shown by how you cooperate to keep this institution together after my passing. And that's, well, it's written up on the sticker up there. 
Hari Shari Prabhu pointed this out recently. That that's not the exact quote. It's a specific quote. So, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.